c. I an Egyptian childhood an Egyptian childhood the autobiography of Taha Hussein translated by E. H. Paxton London George Routledge and Broadway House, 68-74, 1932 Sons, Ltd. Carter Lane, e.g. H. Printed in Great Britain at the Mayflower Foot Press, Plymouth. William Brandon and Son, Ltd. Introduction Taha Hussein was born Magadi Ardaka in the province of Minia, Upper at Egypt, in the year 1889. An Egyptian childhood An account of his early life up to the age of 13, when he went to Al-Azhar, together with a valuable description of Egyptian provincial life and the customs and beliefs of the country folk in Egypt. The autobiography ceases just after he has come to Cairo to study at Al-Azhar. He has remained there for 10 years and acquired a thorough knowledge of Arabic literature under the guidance of Sheikh Sayyid Ali al marsafi but from 1908 he began to study at the newly founded Egyptian University, where he was initiated into modern Western methods of literary criticism, and rapidly threw off the prejudices and cramped outlook of the Azharite. The European professors at the Egyptian University, Nalano, Litman, and Santalana, were the men whose helpful influence Dr. Taha Hussein acknowledges with gratitude. He graduated in 1914, and during the years of the Great War studied at the Sorbonne, where he obtained his doctorate. In 191-9 on his return to Egypt he was appointed Professor of Ancient History in the Old Egyptian University, and appointed among our on reconstitution he its Professor of Arabic was Literature. More noteworthy of his writings Tihkra Abil Allah, Memph following Ori of the Abu Vala Analytique et al Critique d'Ibn Khaldun 1917 Day Talks, 1925 to 6 Thought, 1925, Muari, 1914 De la Hadith al Arba, Khadat, v. Hilosophie al Etude Sociale v. Wens Fikr, Leaders of Fiesh Shi'ar al Gahili, A Critical Study of Pre Islamic Poetry, 1926, Fi al Adab al Gahili, on pre-Islamic literature, 1927. As leader of the modern school he has aroused a considerable amount of opposition from the conservative elements in the country, but the attacks of conservatives have only enhanced his popularity with the liberals and made him the idol of the students. During the storm which was aroused in Egypt by his book on pre-Islamic poetry he was described six by a popular English daily as the Martin Luther of Egypt. The comparison is hardly fair since he does not claim to be a religious reformer. However, he has shown Luther's dauntless courage in the face of persecution and like Luther has survived it. To crown his achievements this year, 193-1, he was elected Dean of the Faculty of Arts, being the first Egyptian to attain that post. We may well ask with his an Egyptian childhood high position. We small daughter in how he has attained read of him this in 1902 as a poor blind student at Al-Azhar just up from the country, yet 25 years later he is one of the most honored and respected men in Egypt with a reputation that extends far beyond the bounds of his native land. He will not however, admit, phenomenal rise from entirely due to his own that this obscurity to fame brilliant is genius, and with his daughter to the guardian angel who has brought him happiness in the place of misery and hope out refers the reader together of despair. Indeed, blindness, while it undoubtedly sharpens the intellect and makes the unamai paired senses keener, often begets an inferiority probably a worse affliction and a greater handicap than mere physical blindness. It is the removal of this stumbling complex, which is blocked that Dr. Taha owes to his wife, who is of course the guardian angel. And why not for who but an angel could perform such a service? I he cannot remember the name of the day nor is he able to an year wherein God cannot even remember it was exactly and can place in the it placed month in fact he it. What time of the day only give it approximately? To was the best of his belief, the time of day dawn or dusk. That is due to the either fact that breeze he remembers feeling it on his face, slightly cold which the heat of the sun had not destroyed. And that is likely because notwithstanding his ignorance as to whether it was light or he just remembers on leaving the meeting with soft, gentle, delicate light as though darkness covered some of dark, house, its edges. Then that is also likely because he seems to remember that when he met with I just this breeze and light he did not feel around him any great movement of people stirring, 
but he only felt the movement of people waking up from sleep or settling down to however, if there has remained distinct clear memory of this it. To him any time about which there is no cause to doubt, it is the memory of a fence which stood in front of him and was made of maize stems and which was only a few paces away from the door of the house. He remembers it the fence as though he saw he remembers that the only yesterday of which this fence was composed were taller than he was, and it was difficult for him to get to the other side of it. He also recalls that the stalks of this fence stalks were close together, as it were stuck together, so that he could not squeeze between them. He recollects too that the stalks of this fence stretched from his left to not conjecture, right to the end at an ending he could stretched end of the world from his in that direction. The end of the world in this direction was near, for it reached as far as the canal, which in fact he discovered when he got a little older. Now shall this played a great part in his life we, or say in his imagination. All this he remembers, and he remembers which used he did, but were able to traverse the fence by leaping over it or by squeezing between the stalks to where how rabbits to as envious he was of the go out of the house, just they could nibble what was behind way of green stuffs, it in the of which he remembers particularly the cabbage. Then he remembers how he used to like to go out of the house at sunset when people were having their evening meal, and used to lean against the maze fence pondering deep in thought, until he was recalled to his sir who was some distance to his left, with his audience round him. Then the poet would roundings by the voice of a poet sitting at begin to recite in a wonderfully sweet tone the doings of Abu Zaid, Khalifa, and Diab, and would remain silent except them or desire startled then they would demand a repetition his hearers when ecstasy enlivened them. And argue and dispute. And so the poet would be silent until they ceased their clamour after a period which might be short or long. 3. Then he would continue monotonous tone. His sweet recitation in a he remembers out at two that whenever he went night to his place by the fence, their bitter grief in his soul because he was always knew only too well that his entertainment would be curtailed as soon as his sister called him to come indoors. He would refuse, and then she would come out and seize him by his clothes while he resisted with all his might. Then she would carry him in her arms as though he were a plaything and run with him to the place where she put him down to sleep on the ground, placing his head on the thigh of his mother, who turned her attention to his eyes, opening them one by one and pouring into them a liquid which hurt him but did no good at all. But although he felt the pain he did not complain or cry because he did not want to be a whimperer and a winner poor weak then he was carried to a room and, his sister having like his little sister, corner of a small laid him down to sleep on a mat on which had been spread an eiderdown, put another cover on top of him, and left him inwardly bemoaning his fate. Then he began to strain let for hoping that he might catch through the wall the sound of the sweet songs which the poet was reciting in the open eventually sleep overcame air under the sky. More until he woke up no knew him and he when everybody was sleeping, his brothers and his hearing to its utmost, sisters stretched about him snoring loudly and deeply. He would throw the coverlet from his face in fear and hesitation because he hated to sleep with his face uncovered. For he knew full well if he uncovered his face in the course of the night or exposed any of the would be at the mercy of one of the numerous evil sprites which inhabited every part of the house, filling every nook and cranny, and which used extremities of his body, they to descend under the earth as soon as ever the sun began to shine and folk began to stir, but when retired the sun sank to his to their lair resting places, and people when lamps were extinguished and voices hushed. Then these evil sprites would come up from under the earth and fill the air with hustle and bustle, whispering and shrieking. Often he would awake and listen to the answering crows of the cocks and the cackling of the hens and five between these it was sometimes various at others but at crowing, really the cocks assuming was the voices of the evil sprites their shapes in order to deceive people and would try hard to distinguish sounds, because did not worry his about them, bother or sounds head about these because they came to him from afar, but what really did make him afraid were other sounds which he could only distinguish with the greatest effort, sounds which proceeded softly from the corners of the room. Some of them teased them. Were the however he liked the hissing fire, of a kettle boiling on movement of others resembled the light articles being moved from and again others sounded wood place to place, like the breaking of or the cracking of stems. But his greatest terror of all was of persons who, in his imagination, 
stood in the doorway of the room and blocked it and began to make various noises something like the performances of dervishes at their religious exercises. Now he firmly believed that he had no protection from all these terrifying horrible noises unless he inside the coverlet and wrapped himself up from head six apparitions to toe, without leaving any hole or crack between himself and the outer air, for he did not doubt but that if an aperture in the coverlet, the hand of would be stretched through it to his body and catch hold of him or poke him he and left evil sprite mischievously. And so on account of these things he used to spend his nights in fear and trepidation but he did not sleep very much. He used to wake up very early in the morning, or at any rate as soon as dawn broke, and he used to spend a great part of unless he fell asleep, the night between these terrors and his fear of the evil sprites until at last he heard the voices of the women houses after filling as they returned to their their water jars at the singing as they went Allah Yalayal what a night! My God! Allah! My God Canal! He knew that dawn had begun to peep and that the evil sprites had descended to then he himself their subterranean abodes was transformed into a sprite and began to by this loud tone and to sing as much of the song of the poet as he could remember, and to nudge his brothers and sisters who were lying around him until he talked to himself in a seven had woken them up one by one. And when he had accomplished that, there was such a shouting and singing and hustle and bustle, restrained a veritable babble, that was only one up from Godfather, their sheik, when the his bed and called for a jug of water in order wash himself before praying. Then only were voices hushed and the movement quietened down until the sheikh too had completed his religious ablutions, said his drunk prayers, read a portion of the Quran, but as soon his coffee and gone to his work. Door closed behind him the whole through family rose from their beds and ran to scarcely the house shouting and playing, fortinguishable from the feathered and as ever the legged inhabitants of the house. Means literally an elderly I sheikh or sheikh. Bedouin for the niet among used. Is it hence man for the head ot Arab civilist of a tribe and among dervishes? Sheikh has many the like sect, or order and a learned doctor ot other uses besides. It may mean Islam, or a senator. Religion, there are no priests in the merely used as a title of respect for one or family the of head the author's father, as being who had memorized the Quran. Elder and its Greek cf the English word presbyteros from which the words equivalent here it is presbyter and priest are derived. A2 he was convinced that the world ended to the right of him with the canal, which was only a few paces away from where he stood and why not. For he could not appreciate the width of this canal, nor could he reckon. Expanse was so narrow that any youth could jump from one bank to the other. Nor could he imagine that there was human, animal, and vegetable life on the other side of the canal just as much as there was on his side, nor could he calculate that a that this active grown man could wade across this canal in flood without the water reaching up to his nor did he conjecture that from time then it to time there was no water in it. Boys which in ditch long a would become played and searched in the soft mud for such little fishes as had been left behind, and so had armpits died, when b the water had been cut nine off. These things did he ponder, and he absolutely certain in his mind that none of only was was another world quite independent of that in which he lived. A world that was inhabited by various strange beings without number, among which were crocodiles which swallowed people in one mouthful, and also enchanted folk who lived under the water all the bright day and during the dark night. Only at dawn and dusk did they come up to the surface for a breath of air, and at that time they were a great danger to children and a seduction to men and women. This canal and among these strange creatures also were the long and broad fish which would no sooner get hold of a child than they would swallow him up, and in the stomachs of which some children might be fortunate enough to get hold of the signaturing that them to king.